Welcome to Santa Barbara Talks with Josh Molina. It's such a pleasure today to be here with two of my former colleagues, and we got a lot to talk about, Jade Martinez-Pogue and Lily Dallow, and we got big news to talk about, and we're going to talk about their big trip to see Taylor Swift, and I have a bunch of questions about this because, Jade, I want to apologize right off the bat. I used to tell you Shake It Off was Taylor Swift's best song. Yeah. But since my daughter and I started listening to Taylor Swift, all because of you as a transition from Olivia Rodrigo to Taylor Swift, we're on to Sabrina Carpenter now, by the way. Nice. I have a more complete view of uh, Taylor Swift's sort of portfolio of music. So she's got like three or four good songs. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I won't start <laughs> the show <laughs> that way. But, uh, we're going to talk about that. And I know all the Swifty fans out there, which is basically everybody is going to be interested in this. But Lily, Jade, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, but yeah thank That's you. <laughs> yeah, we haven't worked together in a while, so it's fun catching up. Lily, I want to start with you. I heard some news over Fiesta. The word on the street is you've got a big change coming up. So can you talk about that, please? Yeah, absolutely. It's It's surreal. It doesn't really... It doesn't feel 100% real yet, but this is my last week up at TV Hill. Um, I'll be moving down to LA by the end of this month and starting at KTLA um, as a digital content producer. So it's similar to the position I started in at KYT um, back when Jade and I were just, you know, frolicking around up on TV Hill together. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but it's a it's a huge it's a huge jump, um, big transition. Uh, I'm super nervous. One thing that I'm really excited about that's a little shallow, but just I think is super cool is they have a helicopter. Wow! <laughs> it's gonna be my life's mission to get on that thing someday. <laughs> so KTLA, I mean, this is a big market. Is I think Los Angeles is what like the second biggest market in the country. Yeah, yeah behind New York. And, uh, you know, as a California person, I grew up watching KTLA and back like Hal Fishman and like uh, Stu Nahan doing sports and just the whole crew uh, yeah. of people like in the morning to 10 o'clock at night news. So this is cool. I think that's awesome to go to work for KTLA. What what are some of the, the things you think are going to be different in that big market compared to Santa Barbara County? Well, so to start. At KYT, you know, I'm the digital content director there, and our the digital team is like basically three people, and one one of those like one person on that team isn't really. It's kind of we all. It's a triage system in a way, so it's made up of me, um, the assignment desk, which was Jade's old position, and then there's a third person that kind of does both digital and assignment stuff and they're they work on a night side slash weekend schedule so it's kind of we have like all the times covered but everybody kind of like sometimes I'll do assignment desk things such as you know helping schedule stories helping find stories helping vetting stories uh like telling reporters to get to a certain place for breaking news and then they'll help me with digital which is you know writing stories and um, breaking the news online and social media and all that. And so while I've, I have like absolutely no, nothing bad to say about my experience at KYT, it's been lovely and I adore my team and, um, you know, the experience is why I am where I am now. I'm so excited at KTLA. They have a, like a, a legit digital team of digital journalists. And I think it's about six to eight people and so rather than just being you know my own digital person with the help of them definitely don't want to discredit that um I'll be like one of you know of a digital team and there'll be other people that are on the same page in terms of you know like just being passionate for for digital journalism because working in a broadcast station you know it's like digital is first to everything but broadcast is you know obviously the main point and I mean also at KTLA but there they have an established team and they have like their own director and 
you know, I'm just really excited to to be, I have I said the word team enough. <laughs> Now, I know you a little bit from working together. Uh, were you nervous? Uh, that's a big market going through the interview process. Uh, can you just talk a little, a little bit about that just as a, yeah. a young person who's switching jobs? I mean, that's got to be terrifying a little bit, that whole process. Yeah, definitely. It's, it was, it's been strange because of how bittersweet it is. Like, like, like I said, I really have nothing bad to say about KYT. It's just, you know, it's just a career move. And uh, I have, I mean, this is my hometown and I, you know, this place has kind of become like another legitimate home for me. And I love everybody that I work with, but through the interviews with KTLA, the people that work there remind me a lot of the people at KYT. And so that's been making it feel a little less scary for me, especially because they do have a lot of people from KYT. <laughs> and, uh, and then we have some people from there. So I feel like a little bit more comfortable in that people wise. And then um, like job duty wise, I've, I've done everything that this role requires so I felt very confident going into the interview process um my old the old me the old KYT digital content director works at KTLA and he was super helpful in this whole process I think he really did a lot of um you know the back work with putting in a good word and all that so it's definitely important to to know some people um and then yeah, I mean, I've written like hundreds of breaking news stories. I mean, Jade has too. And uh, I know, I really know my way around the digital world. So I think that um, I'm confident in that. The thing that I'm the most scared about is I never imagined myself living in LA. Um, I've always wanted to move to a big city, but I always kind of imagined I'd be going back to the East Coast where all my family's from. And, um, you know, that's just kind of the cities that I always imagined. Um, but when this opportunity came up, it's too good to, you know, to push us, push aside. And it's also not too far from here. And I won't have to acclimate to any crazy new weather patterns. And, you know, I think it'll be a good, a good, I mean, there's definitely worse places to learn to be a real adult than Los Angeles. So, <laughs> yeah. And are you going to be living in LA proper or have you decided yet? Like where? Yeah, to... I'm going to be moving into Century City. Okay. I don't really know anything about it <laughs> but I've heard that it's it's a really great place and it's central um not too far from the beach not too far from Hollywood which is where KTLA is which that's been a weird thing to to say it's like yeah I'm gonna be I'm gonna be working in Hollywood <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but um yeah so and the I I have a friend that lives in Century City and she was the one that was like her roommate and I went to elementary school with her and our families all know each other. So yeah, I got really lucky with that. Wow. Well, that's, that's so cool. I'm so happy for you that you have this opportunity and I know you're going to kill it there and just yeah. do amazing things. And before I get to Jade, because I want to check in with, with you on your career, what's going on in New York. Um, I do want to say that uh, you know, it's been a pleasure working with you, the few stories that we did at Newshawk, and you are a fantastic writer. I've told you that privately. I've said that publicly. And I hope, um, you know, uh, you continue to keep writing. I know you were talking about like a master's program and you were talking about like pursuing that. And so I hope you can, I know you'll be writing in this job, but I hope you continue your yeah, I long form Really writing because yeah. uh, the stuff you have on the Newshawk site and just in different places is just really well done. Yeah, I think I'll I'll be definitely staying in touch with um, the Montecito Journal as well. Um, so I'll 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 keep some some claws dug in over here, <laughs> definitely. And then I'm also taking some screenwriting classes on the side, just as a little hobby. Cool. That's what so, yeah. Cool. And we'll be able to see your name on the KTL website. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Okay. Car crashes, you know? Oh crashes. yeah. I'll, make it, I'll be working like the action hours, like I'm um, like during the night and on the weekend. So I'm sure I'll be getting some crazy headlines. <laughs> All right. That's amazing. Well, good luck with that. Uh, Jade Martinez Pogue, as, a, as everyone knows, all my audience, 
started at News Hawk and then you went to KYT and uh, abandoned me. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I had a greater opportunity and uh, that's how you got to know Lily and you guys did tremendous work there and you became uh, uh, good friends. And we're going to talk about your trip in a second. And now you're in New York uh, working for Law360. Last time we talked, uh, it was a check-in and you were going through some union sort of action and, and all of that. Um, how, how are things going for you? Can you update the audience on where things stand with you? Yeah, so I'm still at Law360, still covering the same beats, uh, which is mergers and acquisitions, private equity, sports and betting, capital markets. Um, still in the union fight, it's been... Let's see, I started at Law360 at the end of October 2022, and we started bargaining either that November or December. And so we're still um, in that process. I don't know when it's going to end. I thought it was going to be over last year, and then I thought it was going to be over in the spring. Um, but we're still doing that. But it's good, you know, not always the most interesting content to write about, but I have been able to write about some like pretty big national stories which is cool it's always been like my goal to write for a national news organization and cover stories that like everyone knows um so yeah not as nearly as exciting as lily's career right now <laughs> but it's good like up in there <laughs> well i'm sure the next show we'll be doing you know we'll be talking about something you know amazing that yeah. you're excited about but actually kickball right what's going on yeah. you're involved in some kickball league let's talk about that that sounds so cool yeah so uh one thing about my current job is that it's fully remote and i have maybe like six or seven people on my team but we're all all over the country and we meet only once a week on fridays for like 10 15 minutes um, so moving to the East coast, not knowing anybody, it was really difficult to make friends. Uh, so in the spring, I signed up for a kickball league and it's through this nonprofit organization called Volo. So you pay for the season, but some of the proceeds that the league gets go to funding underfunded youth children's youth children sports programming um like at underfunded schools so it's uh doing good for the community um but i've met just a bunch of people through it there's some older adults on our team but the majority of us are similar like in my age range um and i was a little bit nervous signing up by myself not knowing anybody but it turns out that most of the people on my team didn't know anybody either um and so now every tuesday night we go out we play under the lights, you know, you get to see the Manhattan skyline in the back. Um, and it's just been really fun to get out there and play sports, be active, but also make friends. And build when you kick the ball, where do you aim? Where are you trying yeah. to kick it? I, I usually try and go for like shorter kicks because whenever I try and like actually kick it far to the outfield, people just catch it mm. right away. And then I get out. Um, but one thing that I didn't know about kickball from like playing it back in elementary school is that we're allowed to throw the ball at people to get them out. Like you don't have to just tag the base or whatever. So you can just throw it at people, which is kind of crazy <laughs> to me. But it just adds like that much more excitement to the game. I want to play and I want to choose who I play with if I get to throw the ball at them. That sounds yeah. Cool. <laughs> have you been like pegged on the feet by somebody throwing you out at one of the bases, like knocked off? I haven't, but I've definitely taken a few falls uh, and like people have run into me and, you know, I don't know if people think it's a contact sport, but it can be. <laughs> well, that's so cool. That's, that's great. Well, um, you know, you're doing great work at Law360 and doing national stories and stories that I could never even begin to, you know, help you or understand or process because... <laughs> Wow. Well, the three things you said you covered, I'd spend four hours trying to understand, you know, just those. Yeah. Words, so. <laughs> no, I had to, definitely did a lot of Googling when I applied for the position. I was like, what the heck is private equity? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I've mastered the art of reading the staff report and getting, you know, three quotes for a story. And, you know, you're over there writing about the, you know, the betting markets and gambling <laughs> and sports. So great job. <laughs> um, 
but let's let's shift gears because you two were very active on social media and i had heard a little bit you mentioned it to me was it amsterdam did you go to amsterdam to watch taylor swift okay so let's just start like why would you go all the way to amsterdam to watch taylor swift when she's doing three nights at sofi stadium or five nights six nights whatever she had this big tour take me back to the beginning how did this happen how did this this sort of spontaneous combustion of let's go to amsterdam to watch taylor swift uh how did you conceive this well, I'll have it be known that I tried to get tickets in the U.S. Um, I, it was not, you know, not for lack of trying. I just couldn't. Um, and I got really sad about it. It's like, I can't miss this. Is like, even if she goes on tour in the future, you know, there's never going to be anything that covers her whole discography from, you know, start to finish. Um, and so after all the when they announced the european tours shows i just signed up for a bunch of the pre-sales so it wasn't like oh let's go to amsterdam for this you know i signed up for london i signed up for paris i think italy germany and amsterdam was just the one that i got a pre-sale code and uh woke up at 2 a.m to wait in the queue to <laughs> get the tickets and it's it's just the one that ended up working out. Um, but the crazy thing is we were talking about this, like the whole trip, the amount that we paid for, you know, a week long Europe trip, seeing the Eras tour is probably the same as if we had gotten, you know, nosebleeds out oh. for one night at SoFi Stadium. Like yeah. it was insane. <laughs> so you went into the queue because I know a lot of, not a lot. I know a few people who talked about when they tried to buy tickets, it just like cycled, cycled, and then all of a sudden not, the system broke or there were no tickets or it was sold out and frustrating because they're, you know, the people I talk to, they're buying tickets for their daughters, right? And so like, they're like, oh, my daughter's going to be so mad at me kind of thing. So that's what you experienced, but then you decided maybe somewhere else overseas, it's going to be easier. Is that like yeah and i think when the american you know she went did the american leg first that's when the whole ticket master crashed um and so i think when i signed up for that i didn't really know how it worked like i didn't know that you had to sign up for pre-sale for specific shows i thought it was just um, yeah because you know when i bought concert tickets before i'll search the artist and then i'll choose the show and the location and it's all in one spot but you had to choose, like, if I wanted to go night one in LA, I'd have to sign up for night one in LA. If I wanted to go to night one in Arizona, you have to sign up for that show specifically. And I didn't know that. So I only signed up for one. And obviously that lessens the chances of actually getting tickets. Um, and so I think by the time the European tickets opened up, like, I just knew you know, I had a lot more of understanding of how the whole thing worked. Um, and I did wait in the queue for like what, two or three hours. I was texting Lily the whole time. Yeah. I was gonna say, <laughs> from my perspective, it was just like Jada texted me maybe like within a week before, I think you waited in the queue and you were just, it was just out of the blue. Like, hey, like if I get tickets to see Tales of Nam Sham, you come with me in like a year. I was like, yeah, of course, sure, why not? <laughs> It's to your out, like you know, yeah, I love that idea. And then you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get tickets next week. I was like, all right. And then I was, I woke up and I just, like, the string of texts. It was like I got to live through it all. And <laughs> 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 real time, it was like, okay, I'm in the queue. Okay, I'm waiting. Oh my god, I think it crashed. Wait, no, we're good. Okay, I'm second in line. Oh my god, I'm in. Okay, guys, I'm in. I got the tickets. I got the tickets. And it was just like. <laughs> nonstop it was so good it was just like a play-by-play -play. it was great and then um so it was us and Phoebe and uh yeah I couldn't believe that you got up so early that was like it takes a lot it takes a lot of grit <laughs> yeah and I got no. the I got the time 
conversion wrong because obviously this was all in Amsterdam time. So I actually like woke up like an hour before I needed to, too. And I was just sitting there like 1, 2 a.m. on my couch waiting. <laughs> so, but there was something, right, where you didn't know where the seats were or can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah, so the website was all in Dutch. Um, because it was <laughs> Ticketmaster Netherlands. And I had talked with Phoebe and Lily like ahead of time. I was like, what are we willing to pay? Yeah, you know, what's yeah. our price range for this? Um, and like so $10, we think dollars anything for Taylor. Right? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> that was the case um, we were going to show in the US. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so we figured it out. And I didn't, like, I wasn't sitting there converting every single ticket option because they were in euros, but I had, like, a vague sense of how much it would be. Um, and I was trying to find three tickets together. Like, I didn't care what section. I think we all agreed. Like, we yeah, could be in the agree. very top row in the back to the side. Like, it's fine. We just wanted to go. And the only... I finally got three together. I tried so many different options, and I couldn't get three together. And then I did, I found three that were within our price range. And so I booked, you have like five, seven minutes to put the tickets in your cart, check out and everything. Um, and when so I did that. Doesn't it like tickets, like you see them disappear, like in front of your eye, like you'll select yeah. some and then you'll go to check out, be like, oh, sorry, somebody like too slow. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's and so they crazy. always tell you to like put in your credit card information and everything ahead of time. So when you get to check out, mm. it's just all there, which I did for the US Ticketmaster. But I had to, I had the tickets in my cart and this is Ticketmaster Netherlands. So I had to make a whole new account and to enter the credit card information again, all while they're just sitting there and the clock is ticking. <laughs> and it was very high stress. Um, but we got the tickets and I Google translated the email afterwards and it said like standing like front standing right or something. And so we knew we got floor tickets, but even then we looked at the map of the arena and we thought we were going to be like way in the back of the floor. Like yeah. it was like general admission and there were no like rows or seats or anything. It just had the section number and it said like standing. And so the floor, like, you know, the entire floor of the arena is open and the stage, there's like a stage at the end and then it comes down the middle. There's like stage in the middle, it comes all the way down the end. So like she'll, she just, she's an athlete, runner, track star. She goes up and down the entire <laughs> show. And uh, we thought that we were going to be like the farthest from the stage, like standing, you know, in front of all these or behind all these Swifties. But we were like pumped. We were like, this is awesome. Like, that's the kind of thing where if you're, you know, like super, like if you get general admission and you're like a diehard fan, there's people that will go and like camp out to make sure that when you get in, you're up close. But yeah, we were expecting to be back. Because we only got there like, what, two hours before the yeah. doors opened. So we weren't, and we didn't care, you know, we're like, we'd kind of rather be in the back. So we're not squished and like, yeah, we're like bumping we into early, people. Or not early, but like, get, you know. Be some like, of the make our way out. out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> but yeah, so we didn't even like we didn't camp out. We got there two hours before we were able to get our merch and everything while we we're waiting in line. I had to climb over the barricade. Lily held down the fort in line. Yeah. And we, and Phoebe, <laughs> yeah, we went to go get the merch because there was a tent outside the arena, which was really nice. And I think it helped like cut back on, you know, wait times and stuff. But she started moving while we were in line. And so I got like, luckily they let me back in and I didn't have to go to the very end of the line, but I'm in my like little sparkly dress and pink cowgirl boots, just <laughs> hurtling over the rail to get back to Lily. The beautiful thing about Amsterdam is everyone there is so nice. Like everyone is so nice. And uh, yeah, I was standing in line and everybody's in such a happy mood, you know, like, there's really no, like, no bad vibes. It was great. And as soon as the crowd started moving, I was like, oh, my God, I have to get over here. They're, we're getting inside. And then I was, like, so nervous looking around, like, trying to see. Because 
at that point like behind us in line had started filling up like couldn't even see the end of it I was like oh my god they're gonna have to weave their way all the way through here and then all of a sudden I heard giggling and I looked and it was Jane and Phoebe and a guard was like helping them get over <laughs> they're like is this your friend I was like yes thank you <laughs> they got over. but one of the coolest things so we uh when we got there a couple hours early we walked into the general admission to the end of that line which was like a lot thicker than um the stand the the other one and we thought that was our ticket and when we showed the guy our ticket he was like oh no you're in this one and we we're like what and it was the small like we thought that it was a vip line because it was smaller and i was like interesting but then as soon it took a long time for it like you know to open and for us to get in but it was so smooth once it like once our gate opened and we were inside there was like no line for the concessions no line for the bathroom they were so organized with it they had people come in and waves so that way like it wasn't just all open at once and a bloodbath to get to your seat and get drinks and whatnot it was like very chill and uh and then when we got inside i mean jade you can take it from there when they directed us where to go <laughs> yeah no, it was we just started walking in and like all three of our like jaws were just to the floor the whole time we were walking in just like because we had no we knew we were going to be general admission so we knew we were going to be on the floor but we had no idea we would be this close and like at this point we still got in fairly early like there wasn't a huge crowd there like we got to choose which spot we wanted to stand in we got to sit down yeah. and like on it was floor. just we thought yeah. that so when we first walked in we were walking right into the back corner that we thought we were going to be standing in but then our tickets said standing right and so the section that we thought we were going to be in was just general admission and we saw a sign on the right that said like standing right go this way and so we just started walking in like a single file line on this railing all the way like up to the front closer the and closer. we were just like <laughs> oh what's happening and we get up and we're literally like 15 feet away from the stage and just absolutely freaking out like I don't think either of us made a full sentence for 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and I think we thought we were in the wrong spot we were like yeah. oh no one caught us like how they wrong. let us in here mm -hmm. yeah. yeah no we were so close and oh. uh the other like one really cool thing that I wanted to point out about this whole process, you know, getting to the concert before even talking about the concert itself was, um, I mean, obviously, you know, the big, one of the biggest news stories that's come of this is how Taylor Swift has like flipped every city that she goes to, like, you know, economy booms and the city just goes crazy for her. Like everybody celebrates her. We, so when we went to Amsterdam, we flew in and out of London and we took the train <laughs> to Amsterdam. For but the viewers for the views <laughs> we were like oh yeah let's take the train it's gonna be such you know it's underwater like <laughs> and uh we in london though because she had just been there and that's when she did that giant you know the the huge one where she had travis come out on stage and all that they still had um all of this merch in the like gift shops like it would be normal you know london england souvenir stuff and then just Taylor Swift sections like in every single gift shop it was crazy and then everywhere you go like you're gonna see at least every day probably 50 people wearing her merch it was unbelievable and when we were on the in like when we were on the train on our way to Amsterdam the girl sitting next to me I started talking to her because she was reading a book I had read and then she's from Australia and she was going to the same exact concert as us and she and like we started talking about how she was basically there for the same reasons because she couldn't get tickets you know like when she wanted to and then her sister wanted to go to this one and all this and that and then we ended up being on the the same train like the next train that we had and the four of us me Jade Phoebe and this girl from Australia all set in a um it just happened that our assigned seating was one of those tables and we were like playing card games talking about Taylor Swift and then when we got into Amsterdam, it was like every every mode of transportation that we got on, there were more and more girls, like our kind of demographic, you know? And I was like, I see what's happening here. And then on the like the little train ride in Amsterdam, once we got there to get closer to our hostel, it was just like 
everybody on the on the train was talking about the concert and then we got into the hostel room and all the girls in there were there for the same concert it was just a complete takeover and then when we were walking to the concert um there were just girls in sparkly dresses everywhere it was it was like such a happy sight <laughs> it was yeah it was such it was so surreal to see that like you know she has you know a huge fan base like a huge audience but to see even like a day or two after the concert on every block like you'll see someone wearing the same sweatshirt as you or the shirt you're you'll see their glitter still on their face yeah. like it yeah we had crazy. it glittered all the way back to the stage <laughs> yeah <laughs> So can you tell me the moment she comes on stage and you, you know, you see her, she's out there, it's now real, she's actually going to make it and perform in front of you. Um, I'm assuming she looked at only you two, you three, yeah. you, you know. It was a <laughs> private concert. <laughs> um, well, but, you know, so you, you're, you were already blown away by your seats, but now she's finally here. Take me to the moment when she comes on stage. I think the thing about the Eras tour is the opening of it. Just it does a such good job in itself of building the anticipation. Like she has this visual on the screen that's like a big clock that starts counting down. I think it started at like two minutes. Yeah. So it, was, just, it wasn't like too long. It was a perfect amount. And also Paramore came like Paramore open. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. A unbelievable voice she was a powerhouse it was so fun to watch her and like yeah that was that was like i cannot imagine a better opener for a concert like that yeah so you and had then, the like, countdown when, yeah good yeah when the countdown after you know it did the whole audio thing the, it's been a long time coming and just like <laughs> all of this like yeah it, I, I had like had that memorized but it's fun um <laughs> But then all her dancers start coming out and they have these like huge, I don't know, like fabric cloth things that they're waving with the air and it looks like giant clamshells and there's smoke blowing from the stage and it's it's just a spectacle in itself <laughs> before she even yeah, before she even gets on stage and then she comes out from like underground in the middle. And I think it truly hit me. It's like wow there are hundreds of thousands of people like watching one person mm -hmm. like yeah. seeing her on true. stage just made her so much more human to me I don't know like because I was just like wow like she is a person <laughs> she's yeah. right there like it was crazy <laughs> and so what was her first song she sang what did she open with Miss Americana yeah I think so. Slash cruel summer. Yeah, cruel summer. I was gonna say cruel summer, but I you're the expert. <laughs> so, I think like the yeah. <laughs> so so what is she like to perform? I mean, obviously she's the biggest star on the planet and she's a billionaire and everyone knows who she is. Um, you know, she has haters, of course, you know, and anyone who criticizes her publicly on social media, the Swifties go and take them down. But um what is she like as a performer? Has she got a powerful voice? Is it more her charisma? Is it all of it? What What were you thinking when you're actually seeing your hero, your heroine on stage? Like, what kind of a performer is she? If you want to go, <laughs> sure. Um, I was blown away by the production. It was like just unbelievable. Like the sets were crazy. At one point, she brought a legitimate cottage on stage. They rolled it out a whole cottage and uh and yeah like the design was amazing the dancers were wonderful she so I had seen her I think twice when I was young she was like my first big concert I ever went to and I remember when that I, LA yeah yeah in yeah. LA um and I remember the biggest thing back then during like the speak now and red tours was um how often she changed costumes like that and how quickly she did it too and now it's like not just costumes but it's the entire arena like changes and also they i have it with me right here but as you're walking in they hand you these little wristbands and it's uh like led lights and everybody in the arena gets one of these and they're programmed to the entire concert so 
you're part of the set. Like, oh, song, you know, it, it, it's different colors and they all it's it's and then different sections light up at different times. And it's all like it's uh, like collaborative in a way, like you feel like you're a part of the show and her specifically. I mean, she's just like such a powerful presence obviously and you can just it just like ripples off of her and her performing is amazing like she's an athlete like that is just crazy the amount of steps she walks like her dancing and her singing and my favorite was probably when she came out with the guitar and she was skipping it was like the second I think um album in the like uh whole show uh fearless and it was just like it was just so fun and everything that she wears is sparkly and like and it's not I, I don't know it just it just it felt like just a show like it wasn't just a concert it was a whole like I felt I felt like I was almost watching a Broadway show <laughs> it was like the storytelling and just feeling like you're a part of something that huge mm -hmm. like you felt included mm -hmm. Really how many I people were there was it a, was it a hundred thousand or how many do you know how many people were um there? like 60, 60 000, yeah. something like that yeah you were saying jade uh i think another thing that was really cool about it is that you know because she's singing her music that she wrote when she was like 17 18 years old and so for each album each era mm -hmm. she would act like she would in that era like when it was uh -huh. fearless and you know she's singing you belong with me she was playing kind of mm -hmm. like the high schoolers got a crush kind of you know just very light and airy and during the reputation album which is more like angry and vengeful she puts on that persona so it's it's very cool to see just the transition between all of that yeah so what was your favorite song like do you, i'm sure each i guess you can't ask that to like swifty maniac right <laughs> every song is your favorite song but yeah. <laughs> was there a song or a moment where you're like this i could die now this moment is the greatest like jay do you have a, did you have a favorite song or favorite moment she did i think my favorite was the fearless set uh she did three songs and I think that's just the most nostalgic for me. Um, you know, I've been a fan of her for a long time, but like, that's what I remember listening to, like, you know, in fourth grade and yeah. going through all those like growing up emotions. Um, so I think that one was my favorite just because it was like, you know, just hearing it in person from this person who like sings the songs that got me through so much growing through fourth up. fourth grade, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My fourth grade heartbreak. <laughs> yeah, that one had a, has a special place in my heart too. I think mostly because I was filming a lot just because I couldn't believe like how close we were. I was like, we're going to live off this forever. <laughs> and I have this video of when she's singing Fearless and she does this as like one of her big things is just putting up the heart sign. And in the video, when she puts it up, it was like, everybody behind her does the same thing and it was just the it's a crazy I'll, I'll show it to you after um josh but that video like that's probably my favorite one that i got from the from the whole concert and then i loved enchanted that she, that was the one song that she did from um speak now and then one of my all-time favorites was style and that one was really fun to watch um but as i was watching the videos because like a lot of times when people take concert videos, you know, I don't really go back and watch them. I'll watch them. And her voice, like she, the mic, like the mic was on. <laughs> she mm -hmm. was, she was singing. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it was so lively. It was she doesn't use auto tune. I'm sorry. I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. Some artists do, right? During when they sing, because they're moving around so much. And like, it's hard to sing well when you're, you know, like Lily said, being an athlete on stage. Yeah, I think what was crazy, too, is that so she has like the best view of the crowd, you know, she's above everyone, she can see it. And so if she saw people that needed water, or I don't know she, if there were ever like yeah, altercations, but she'd be like, in between lyrics of song, she'd be like, shake it off over there, like, yeah. <laughs> just into the songs and like calling to get people help or, you know, whatever they needed. So like, you can tell that she it wasn't just you know playing on the background yeah yeah 
So I made a list of my favorite uh, Taylor Swift songs. I'm assuming she sang Karma. She sang Karma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the to... closer, actually. The oh. very last song. These are songs I discovered like years later. Um, Antihero. Uh, she had to have sang mm -hmm. that one, right? Uh, Cruel Summer. Did she sing Willow? Yeah. 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 So that was good. And uh, Blank Space, Shake It Off, We're Never Getting Back Together, all, all our hits she sang right mm -hmm. and so um jade you're more of a swifty than lily right like lily yeah. loves taylor maybe like bad. a yeah. person would you know but you're, you're, <laughs> you're kind of an obsessed what, what's the deal whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so you're like a crazy person right jade <laughs> <laughs> what's the deal with you and taylor swift jade um um can you kind of help us understand um you know i have my people as artists you know i'm obsessed with but what is it about her that you're so um into to ask me to get vulnerable josh yes. <laughs> no i think it's what i've always said is that you know i think her first album came out in like 06 or 08 or something and so at that point if it was 06 i was eight if it was 08 i was 10 you know i was very a young kid and with each album you can tell she's growing up like in her first albums she's singing about like teenage love or teenage problems she's singing, like there's a song called a place in this world just like this girl trying to find a place in the world and as she grew up i feel like we kind of grew up at the same time as her albums got more mature the problems in my lives were becoming more mature and it just always felt like she had a song relating to something in my life that I was going through and I'm a like I love music um I love lyrics specifically like even if it's not my favorite genre if a song has good lyrics like I will listen to it I like it and so I think she just like her music always gave me something to relate to and it evolved as I was evolving um I do think like her older stuff's a lot better than her newer stuff you know I'm not crazy but um <laughs> i do yeah i think it's just it's like that with like, almost every artist <laughs> you know it's it, hard it's to just be... been like an outlet yeah it's an outlet yeah do you imagine your taylor swift like do you in the shower when you look in the mirror like you used to no. of course right when you were younger <laughs> no that's not you um i would like i would choreograph i would love to choreograph and dances when i was younger so <laughs> i would like do that and it my... was like how do i how do i become one of those dancers up there <laughs> literally yeah no that was going through my mind the whole time like, what do i need to do in life to be one of her backup dancers <laughs> probably learn how to dance but <laughs> that might be one of the steps yeah <laughs> and lily what about you what is it about taylor swift that is so um you know makes you such a big fan um, yeah, a lot of what Jade was saying, like, you know, in, in middle school and high school, like that teen angst kind of like having something to relate to. And I, I also like I sang like my whole life and um, I love music that I can sing along to and like that I can learn and then just sing it on my own. And a lot of those were Taylor Swift songs. Another huge part of it for me was my mom loved her. And so that was like a big bonding thing for us and then same with my cousins when I saw her the second time was when I went with my cousins in Massachusetts um we saw her at Foxborough and um I think like there's a lot of you know great songs out there to like belt it out to but if you're at a party and love story comes on or you belong with me I am screaming that so loudly and like to be in a community where everybody's doing it and it's just so euphoric it like you know that's a high like did she yeah. put her mic out for songs and just let the audience sing it she could probably do that with every song because everyone in the audience <laughs> knows every word she could do that with it. even this so one of the other like exciting parts about these concerts is she does surprise songs and they're always different and it's she does a mashup and the one that she did for ours were two songs that she had never were both of them she hadn't sung before was it just one of them I think one of them but what the but like they were both kind of unreleased or whatever and everyone knew every single word it was it blew my mind and like 
there was one point she came out on stage and, and she got changed into a different outfit. And this little girl that was sitting next to us was like, she's wearing the blue one. Like everybody knows everything that she does. It was just amazing. But uh, what was your question again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Which never happens, by the way. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, something about, yeah, you know. Her, her songs yeah I'll, I'll look back i'll cut this out no i won't i won't because it's funny it's funny okay <laughs> so are we fully like past livia rodrigo era i know jade um was a fan like help me understand what like people in your demographic livia is what old news she never she did it or she's still there taylor's in her own stratosphere where do you two stand on her music I think like Olivia Rodrigo is still very, very huge. Um, she's doing a world tour right now also. Um, I think it's I a little bit, not even different audiences. Like it's a lot of the, like Taylor Swift shares a fan base with people who like Olivia Rodrigo too. I think it just, it takes years and years for someone to get to the level that Taylor Swift is at. And, you know, like she wasn't as big as she is now when she was Olivia Rodrigo's age, you know? And so I think they're just kind of on two different playing fields. But I think Olivia Rodrigo is still a huge star. Like she has an insane voice. Um, I do think she... Okay. Right? Like Taylor Swift was one of her biggest influences. Like she's a songwriter like Taylor. Yeah. 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 I think she has a slightly younger audience. Like her music is a little younger but like it's still good i still love it you know um but yeah yeah and i think lily i was just asking you what made you such a big swifty i think that's was the original question oh. so, uh, um love story would come on at a party or oh yeah i just start singing um yeah i mean i i think yeah mostly the community of it and um yeah i I know I answered that part. It was before I started talking about the the surprise songs. There was another point I was gonna make, but it's your mom, the, uh, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Oh, I like when she started like re-recording all of her songs, and like, oh, yeah. I feel like that was like the second coming of Taylor Swift because <laughs> she, you know, everybody got to relive all of all of those songs and. Um, and I feel like it was that time and Olivia Rodrigo was kind of emerging. And I feel like this has kind of opened up a new era of pop. I think I saw like the New York Times or, or some, some publication had a story that I saw on Instagram about it, but like, it was like Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo. And now there's like Sabrina Carpenter, Chapel Roan, Charlie XCX, like all these like powerhouse, you know, like, um, new emerging pop artists that are, you know, that are women and songwriters, storytellers. It's like, you know, it's it's really mainstream right now, and I think it's such a special thing. I I remember I saw a clip once of Taylor Swift giving a graduation speech, I think at NYU, or something, and she said, she's like, don't be afraid to be cringy, and I thought that that was such a solid quote because like you know if you're not if it, you can't be scared of, of the content that you're making and putting it out there like if you love it and people relate to it like that's going to drive your success you can't not put the stuff out there that you love to do because you're scared that it's going to be cringy yeah. and I feel like Taylor Swift's success is you know just proves that yeah you have to take risks and you know if she had never taken all those risks she wouldn't be where she is now um so you guys spent a week together in Europe, and so I'm assuming you're the best of buddies, but can you just talk a little bit? I mean, was it fun every second? Did you, Sometimes people go on vacation, traveling, you know, logistics, there's conflict, you had a third person involved. Um, what was the rest of your trip like? Was it, a, was it a blast? Did you sightseeing? How'd it go? I think it was crazy because before the trip, I hadn't seen Lily in literally over a year, like, um, in person, person, you know, yeah. yeah, since I moved. So um, I did, at least for me, I definitely had some anxieties because I'd never really gone on 
a vacation without my family before. Like I've never done a girl's trip. Um, I've gone on vacation with Garrett, but I, you know, that's different. And so I had a little anxiety, like, are we all going to get along? You know, what if we want to do different things, but I think overall it went really well. I, it's hard to fight or get upset when you're literally in Europe <laughs> going yeah. to see Taylor Swift, you know? Yeah. It was uh, super smooth. I think everybody was really compatible. And what was nice was we were all on the same page about everything. Uh -huh. Like we didn't have any, like there were no conflicts really ever. It was night and day because I, the last time I did a Europe trip after I graduated from college, I was also anxious before this trip because of this last one that I had gone on. I went on like a long 40 day one and I went with a girl that I was friends with at college and her friend from high school. And this time I was going with Jade, my friend from work and her friend from college. And so the last time that I went, the girls that I went with, there were tons of fights. It was like, this trip was night and day from that one. And I, going into it, I was really nervous about the dynamic and, you know, cause it was, it's super similar to, I mean, I knew Phoebe a little bit better than I knew the other girl going into that trip, which helped, but I still, you know, we didn't like, we're not friends apart from through Jade and uh and I it was just super lucky that you know we all got along very well and um we also we didn't have any like we didn't plan ourselves out too too much in advance and I think that that was huge there were things that we knew we wanted to see like in London and um and each day we kind of were just like, okay, we could do this and this today and, you know, figured it out day by day rather than like rushing to get to some tour or whatever. I think each tour that we took, we would just walk up and be like, this one looks good. You guys want to do this one? <laughs> yeah. And I think that caused me a little of the anxiety going in because I'm a planner. Like yeah. I love planning things. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm just, but I'm just one person on the vacation, you know, and so you have to be more go with the flow. And I think it worked out so much better because it allowed us to just stumble upon places and find things that we wouldn't have found if we had planned our trip, you know, to the entirety. And um, yeah, so I think that spontaneity just, it really helped. And it, it was, it was so fun. <laughs> did you blast. stay at hotels or how did you do your lodging? We stayed at hostels. Um, so I think the first, our hostel in London, we had an all girls dorm, but what, there was 10 of us? Mm -hmm. Was it 10 or? Yeah. So um, that was kind of a lot. Lily and I, she was on the bottom bunk and I was on the top bunk. So that was nice. We got to like, um, you know, that if was... I had to go down to the bathroom, I'd just be waking her up. Yeah. No, and I, I have a sleeper, so I wouldn't even budge. But that place is also nice because they had curtains. Like, for your little bunk um the second place didn't but it was only eight i think in the second one or six yeah it was a lot it was smaller but the first one in london was very much like a travel a travel hostel like it whenever we went in there most of the time we were we had to be quiet because there was somebody sleeping like i think people that would just stay there in between flights kind of whereas in amsterdam that one was more of a social like you know, people are there to meet people, go to the concert. The other super fun thing about the timing of being there was because uh, England, or when we were in Amsterdam, Amsterdam was playing in the, what was it, the Euro Cup? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we got to be there the night that they beat, um, I forget. Turkey? Turkey, yeah. So we were there the night that they beat Turkey to go to the semifinals, I think. It was yeah. a big game. Yeah, it was a huge game. And that was really exciting to be there, um, to experience that, like, you know, just the, because the soccer culture over there is crazy. And also, in England, we weren't in England for any of the games, but um, like the energy was awesome. And this is a totally rude question. So it's not the first or last rude question I've asked you to. So, um how much money did you blow on this event? Like, I mean, is it like, did you go into big debt or because no, the tickets we were cheaper? I mean, how much yeah, merchandise? Did it, I think over a year. Okay. I think it was nice. Cause like we got the tickets last July. And so there was that chunk. And then the tickets we bought were our $200? Like 220. 
Yeah. Each one. Wow, that's so good. Oh my goodness. For Taylor four, Swift. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah, so we booked our tickets at one point. We booked our flights at one point. A couple months later, we booked our one of our hostels. A couple months after that, we booked another hostel. So it wasn't this like huge sum of money all at once, which I think was really nice. Um, but I also think like we all kind of talked about how we expected to spend a lot more once we were there. Like I gave yeah. myself a budget and I was a couple of like hundred dollars under yeah. it. Um, I don't know how. But how many yeah, Taylor I, Swift I, shirts did you buy, Jade? Any? Uh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only bought this sweatshirt, but I did my like bill from the merchandise tent was quite large, but I bought shirts for my sisters and then like I got Lily's when I was there she paid me back but you know um but no I didn't go crazy <laughs> that was good <laughs> were your sisters jealous yeah um Lily and we FaceTimed them at one point oh. just to show yeah um they were they were super jealous but super excited I sent you know my sister she has a phone so she's like 13 so I was sending her like our outfits and some of the videos and it was just really cool to be able to like share that um like hobby or you know experience with her too was there anything that was a letdown with the concert a disappointment anything that did not go as you had anticipated or hoped or it was just a perfect experience it was better than we thought <laughs> yeah getting home was a little bit stressful oh, but even yeah. still I think it was a lot better than it could have been because um, yeah. we had to take public transit home and because everything and like they were so organized like they were only letting waves just of waiting. people into the train station at like once teams. yeah like waiting to get yeah the train station and Phoebe's a lot taller than Jade and I so she was the one that was like reporting to, to the reporters of like what was going on you yeah know, I like, couldn't see okay, anything starting to move I think yeah Jade and I we had taken our cowgirl boots off like we were just ready to let yeah. the crowd take us <laughs> but uh and I thought like it was stressful because you didn't know how long you were going to be waiting just like you know shoulder to shoulder with people but it wasn't I think it must have taken us like under an hour to get back yeah it seemed a lot worse when we were there but like when we got through we we're like oh wait like that yeah, actually wasn't that we did it. bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> So was there any reference to Travis Kelsey during the show? He was there. Talk about he he was, was there. Yeah, yeah, Lily has the, the best video. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like hoping, you know, she makes headlines often, but I was like, I want our show to be good. You know, like I want to have been at one of the good shows. And then the next morning, there were just so many headlines about like Travis being there and how he like pumped up the crowd when was she was really walking cute. out. Yeah. Yeah. So we were front standing right and so she came out on the right side like when she left she walked out the right side and when we were starting to walk out like I heard we heard the crowd that sits up to the right that looks down that way start to like get all riled up and I was like let's go and we went over and I just held my phone up tall and I was trying to get a video and see what was going on because we figured that it was like Travis or something and then afterwards I looked at my phone and it was like a half a second clip and you could just see him with his arm around her and he was going like this like getting the crowd all amped up it was really cute. it was really cool yeah where do you two stand do you approve of this uh, relationship is this going to be the one for her or are we going to have an awesome breakup album in a couple of years I love I it hope. I think yeah. it's really cute do you, yeah. do you approve? Are you watching she football? Seems happy. Yeah. Are She's you watching? The biggest Kansas City fan. You have no idea. I just love football. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you uh, was the the show at the beginning of your trip end, or how did it line up in the week you were there? Kind of in the like towards the end, but more in the middle. Mm -hmm. Well, think. no, we only had like two days after, like a yeah. Because the three. show was on, yeah, I think like two. The show was on Friday and we left on like Monday night. Well, we left, yeah, like Monday but, morning and then Monday night. Yeah. 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 Um, so on the tail end, 
from the trip. So were there any big sites you saw? Any other big tourist destination places that you went that you want to share? Yeah, we saw we, we saw Buckingham Palace, the London Eye, Big Ben. Um what else in London? Oh, Greenwich. We saw the, the beginning of time where time starts. Um the London saw, Bridge. The London. tower, the number one bridge. The number one bridge. <laughs> we were laughing because the first night we got there, we didn't realize how close we were to London Bridge. And we were talking, about, like, we got there at, like, 10 or something at night. And we were eating dinner and talking about all the things we want to see. And I looked at my maps. I was like, yeah, London Bridge is, like, right there. And so afterwards, we just walked down. And we were cracking up because in giant letters, like, on the right side of the bridge, it just says number one bridge. And we're like, yeah, this bridge is number one. <laughs> And we like walked all the way down and back and we're like, all right, check that one off the list. Um, and then in Amsterdam, we went on a boat tour through the canals. Um, oh, wow. learned a lot about the city, which is nice. We saw the Anne Frank house. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah. I think it. Amsterdam, we did a lot more just kind of like wandering the streets. Uh, yeah. London, we had like those specific sites that we wanted to see. Uh, but Amsterdam was a lot of like trying restaurants and walking around parks and stuff like that. Oh yeah, Vondel, our our hostel's right on Vondel Park, so Jade would walk through there most morning. So when's the next trip? Are you gonna do this again or? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Lily. <laughs> Hopefully, your <laughs> tour's not over yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been on the Facebook pages. Yeah. For tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you think uh, Taylor? Think... Sorry, go ahead. You've already been looking for tickets. Well, she's coming back to the U.S. for oh. like six shows or something, and so there's Facebook pages where people are reselling them. But I think like I'm too easy to scam, so I don't think I can actually buy the bullet threat. on that. Yeah, I'm a security threat. It clicks on links. It's. It is the only fault she has. <laughs> she is a perfect sweet angel, but she is a massive security threat. <laughs> so just to wrap up, um, has Taylor Swift peaked? Do you think that she's reached the apex of her? Like, is she as high as Madonna has ever been and Michael Jackson and lady got like this we've seen the best of her and from here it's just going to be like reunion tours for the rest of her career what what do you think i would be scared of her if she if she hasn't peaked <laughs> yeah i do think like even talk i was like i don't know how you know she can go on tour again for new albums or whatever but like i don't know how you ever are going to talk the heiress tour where you literally play you know and have a dedicated set to each album that you've ever had um how long was the concert? So, it's like three and a half hours. Just her set was yeah. like three and a half hours. And yeah. then Paramore was like 30, 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was a long time. Well, that's that's pretty amazing. I don't know that I'll ever see Taylor Swift, but um, you know, I'll see her in like 20 years or something when the tickets are more affordable and she's yeah. at Santa Barbara. She's playing at the <laughs> she does a second arrows tour. <laughs> the next time I go see Alanis Morissette, you two are gonna have to do a podcast with me and interview me so I can tell you about my tears of happiness. <laughs> So anyway, make that this, <laughs> anyway, this has been great. I really appreciate you two uh, making time to talk about your amazing trip and seeing Taylor Swift and, you know, just seeing you, the much fun you had and all the joy and being able to reunite, see each other for the first time in a year. That's just so cool. And um, also, you know, hearing about your careers and latest stuff and Lily just, you know, going to go on and do the next thing and just, you know, do great things in LA too. So Thank you so much Jay's for your gonna time. going to go pro for kickball. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. the Olympics. No. <laughs> Kickball's not an Olympic event yet. So. Yes. <laughs> All right. Jade Martinez-Pogue, Lily Dallow, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll we'll talk soon. Take care. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Thank you.